Everybody's Chris from Prepare My 101. Welcome to the wacky world of winter in Ohio. A couple days ago, I was freezing my ass off. Today, I'm in a t-shirt and a light vest because nothing makes sense here when it comes to weather. And it's December 22nd. So, I got, I still have a few product reviews that I got to get knocked out for 2015, but I don't want to you know, bore people with one thing after the next after the next. So I've got a different video for you today. I've been promising to show the different things, methods that I use for finishing a blade. Most people know that for my main method of sharpening at home, I like to use the WorkSharp Ken Onion Edition with the blade grinder attachment. I think it's the best thing out there. It allows me to sharpen pretty much any type of knife and I can go from a small knife to a really large knife with no problem whatsoever. Uh, it takes some getting used to but that's what I prefer. But when it comes to actually finishing a knife, getting the polished edge, I have three other machines and it really depends on the knife. So I'm going to show you what the three machines are today and give you a small demonstration of how they work and where you can get these for yourself if that's something that you're interested in. So don't go away. Okay, so just on the outside chance that you didn't know what the WorkSharp knife and tool, actually the Ken Onion Edition with the blade grinder attachment is, here it is. This is the main body and then this is a completely separate item that you have to get with, that takes different belts than the normal WorkSharp. So this is what I would do most of my sharpening with. But let's say for instance, that I want to finish off an LT Wright Scandi, then this is going to be the preferred method that I use. This is a Harbor Freight Tools six inch buffer. These things run about 40 bucks, so about $39.99. And two of the methods out of the three are the same machine but I have two of them because I don't want to keep switching the wheels. So you could feasibly buy one machine and get a couple different methods that you could put on here and this is the first one this is the one that a lot of people don't know about these wheels are called duro felt wheels and they are the hard felt this is what a lot of knife makers use to finish the sharpening on their Scandi knives and gives them a nice polish. So we're gonna demonstrate that here. We're gonna use an LTWK Genesis. And the compound that generally you want to use, of course we're outside so we got the freaking cops. Thank you. Anyway, the compound that you want to use is a green compound and the preferred green compound is made by rw wilson so that's a, a separate website but if you buy the green compound from him it's like a giant chunk of it. it's going to last you a really long time now the way that i like to do this is i like to have the wheels rotating away from me so always 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 if you're using stuff like this know which way the stuff is turning because if you get sloppy you get complacent you just flip it on and slap a knife on it and it's going the wrong way you run a huge risk of it grabbing the knife and slinging it back into your body which would pretty much suck so you don't want to do that so let's say we just sharpened this now we want to finish it Go ahead and turn this on. We're going to rub some green compound on it. So the wheel's going to look nice and solid green. And you just want to line up your grind. I 
Now the reason I like to have two wheels is because I don't want to be flipping this around and all that stuff. So all I got to do is go over here to the other side to get the other side of the knife. And often I find just doing it once is good enough. Now you're going to get some gunky build up compound on there. So I generally keep some sort of WD-40 handy. And what I do is I just spray the blade down afterwards, take a clean rag and wipe off that excess residue. And I like using the uh, WD-40 water resistant silicone. And then what you end up with is a nice, sharp, almost mirror polished Scandi Edge. That's what's great about the hard felt wheels. And as you can see, it is absolutely hair popping sharp. And that's all there is to it with these Duro felt wheels. Now I will have links to the website that sells these in the description box below. This is kind of the specialty item. There's only one place that I know of that sells these and they get them in bulk from wherever in the world that they make this stuff. So not a lot of people use this. If you don't have a large amount of Scandi ground knives, then I would maybe go with one of the other methods. But you know how, before we go away from it, how easy is it to do something with, you know, more of a belly, you know, like a Jessmic. So anytime you, if you have a lanyard, make sure that you have that up around the handle inside your hand so nothing is hanging around moving equipment. But same thing, all I got to do is line that edge up and I just have to turn it a little bit more. Now we come back over here. And then we clean it up. Yeah, on the Jessmic, this method just makes it absolutely ridiculously sharp and gets that Scandi grind nice and polished and shiny once again. So, what's the next method? Okay, the next method utilizes the exact same equipment. So we've got the Harbor Freight six inch buffer, but these wheels are called power strop wheels. Uh, they're leather. And I like to get two of them at a time. Again, I've seen people use like one of these on some sort of uh, like hand drill, but I think the easiest way for me is to have one on each side of a six inch buffer. So I can do one side of the knife on one side and then just step over to the other. Now the strop compound that I have found that I think works the absolute best on this is called Herb's Yellowstone Strop Compound. And you can find that on Amazon for about 10 bucks. And the few things on here that are available on Amazon, like these wheels and some of the compound, I did put in the sharpening section of the preparemy101.com. But some of this stuff you have to get, you can't get it online. So we're going to, what I like to use these for is smaller knives. So I've got a folder and then I've got like a Browse Blades Ranger V2 and we're just going to touch up the edge. I mean it's already sharp. I don't have anything. I don't keep anything around dull. As soon as I get done using it, I put it back the way it's supposed to be. Same thing. We're going to turn on. We're going to make sure uh, the rotation of the wheels by checking the arrows. I want that going away from me. We're going to turn this on. 
Always make sure you wear safety glasses and stuff like that when you are doing this. Now I don't know why this one wheel looks different from the other. Uh, I don't notice any difference in the way that it works, but anyway, you can kind of see the difference. So I like using the leather strop wheels for the smaller knives with like a saber grind or a flat grind. And basically it's going to do the exact same thing. And more often than not with these, one turn is all it takes each side. I want to turn this off before I go grabbing my rag. These don't these do not leave as much residue if any as the felt wheels do. But there will be some. Now you don't have to just use these on small knives. That's just what I prefer. So I've got Jessica Prime here, which is my peak colorized BK7. And I can I can get the fine edge on this with this as well. Just takes a little practice and a steady hand. You will end up with a ridiculously sharp knife. Okay, the last one is probably the one that I would suggest to people if they're only going to pick one. Again, these are pretty much finishers. But also, if you've got a good edge on your knife, a lot of times all you need to do is a good strop. So, what we have here is a Harbor Freight 1x30 belt sander. This runs about 30 bucks. Now, a lot of people would look at this and assume that you would be going this way. I don't recommend that. I'll show you how we're going to do it in a sec. But what we use, this is called a Surge Sharp leather strop belt made for this size, and they make them for larger ones as well. But what we are going to do, now look, we always check our arrows to see which way the belt or the wheels are turning. So this is going down. But what we're going to do for our purposes, and it's kind of made to do this almost, is we're going to set it on its back. Just like this. So that it is coming toward us. And then we're going to power strop across this way. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to put some R.W. Wilson green on here and we are going to strop the Topps SXB, which has got some crazy angles to it. Now there's a back, there's a, a back piece right here. That's where you want to put your edge. Now this has got that kind of crazy little sweep. I would go up here a little further where that, uh, that back brace is not. Just push down right there. It will conform to it. Clean that up here in a sec.
You don't have to push down hard on this. And you can even go back. Like I said, I think this is going to be a lot easier for a lot of people other than the Duro felt wheels. So you can do the Scandies on here too. And it too will help smooth out that Scandi grind, get it nice, almost mirror polished. So this is piece of cake easy. And that's why I think, even though I like to be uh, have a specialty item for each type of knife that I've found, because i found they all kind of react different. The one I think is going to be the easiest for the most people to pick up that's going to work on the most amount of knives, whether they be large or small, is going to be this. And the Surge of Sharp belts, uh, I found mine on Amazon, so I did add it to the store. But... I'm sure you could find them in some other places as well. And I want to say the belt was about $25. So you're talking, it, I see this a couple different prices depending on if they're having sales or not. So let's just say $30 for the machine, $25 for the strop belt. So you're looking at about a $55 system right here that can pretty much do all of your knives. So there you go. That is the bulk of my blade maintenance equipment now let's just deal with the inevitable i've seen these videos before i know it's going to happen this is going to be a very opinionated comment section well you should just learn how to do it by hand and what if the shit hits the fan you don't have electricity and you know real men sharpen with ceramic and blah 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 everybody has their own method of sharpening and if it works for you then that's just great. But people ask me what kind of stuff I use. And because I have a lot of knives, because I use knives all the time, and because many of my knives are not exactly cheap, you know, I got two LT rights on there, a customized BK7, and, you know, I got dark timbers and all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to sharpen that stuff on a stone. Can I? Sure. Uh, if, if the crap hit the fan and I had to, I've got field ways of sharpening stuff. I have a hanging field strop. I've got ceramic rods. I've got diamond rods. I've got all sorts of stuff. You can if you need to. But guess what? We're still here. The end of the world is not here yet. We still have electricity. And I like to you know, my knives are important to me and I like to take care of them. I like them to be as sharp as they can be, as clean as they can be. Uh, when I get done doing stuff in the field, I spend a good half hour, 45 minutes cleaning and tuning my gear. That includes my knives whenever I come back and I put them away the way that I took them out. These are the different methods that I use for doing that. So if I had to suggest one for anybody that wanted to step up their game a little bit, uh, even if you do sharpen by hand, I would say the belt grinder with the Surge of Sharp belt, that will help polish off that you know, roughness that you get from doing things by hand, maybe polish out the scratches a little bit. If you've got a ton of Scandi ground knives, I would suggest the Duro felt wheels. If you've got a lot of folders, a lot of small stuff, uh, either either the leather belt or the leather wheels. Someone's going to say, well, what about paper wheels? I don't like paper wheels. Some people do. I don't. Uh, I'm not saying they're wrong and I'm right. I'm saying that is my preference. And a lot of the knife makers that I know that sharpen knives every day after they make them don't like paper wheels either. So, you know... LTWK, they use those Durofelt wheels. Uh, I know 
Pete Kohler, he's got some horizontal leather uh, strap belts like that. I mean, everybody uses different stuff. And this is only important if, you're, if you have knife OCD like I do and you want that, your knife to be nice, clean. This will also, if you add in the, the blade grinder, you go out and you get a little too rough with your knife, you put some dings in it, you know, chip the edge or something like that. I can repair that back to looking new with what I have on this table. So any of this stuff right here will help me fix just about any problem. Do you need it? No, you don't. But if you want it, now you know some other options that are out there. So that's my stuff. And like I said, I have other stuff too. On my hidden woodsman haversack that I carry around with me every day, I've got a, a little Velcro pocket that I added to the outside. And in that is my hanging leather strop loaded with Herb's Yellowstone. So I can just throw that on a doorknob somewhere, clean my edge up. I use that on my Havilon blades. It extends the life of my Havilon blades. It'll extend the life of utility knives. I've got ceramic rods. I've got diamond rods. I've got bench stones. I've got the work sharp guided uh, sharpening system. I've got about every kind of method there is. But taking care of my good stuff, my good knives, that stuff I just showed you, that's what I use. So hopefully maybe you learned something or see something that would work for you. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of links in the description box below so you can find some of this stuff. So thanks for watching. Chris from PrepareMind 101. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. PrepareMind101.com is the store. Check out the gauntlet, uh, thegauntlet.tv if you want to check out those videos. I'll be back with some more videos here soon, so see you then.